All right. Well, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our presentation today. I hope you're enjoying a great day, too, uh, uh, at the ClioCon uh, conference today. Uh, I hope you get a chance to check out everything. I know after this, I have to run and introduce myself to Mel Robbins, our last keynote speaker. So I'm really excited about meeting Mel and hope you guys see her as well. Uh, my name is Maggie Javid. I'm the VP of Business Operations and Strategy over at Clio. So this is a really special time for me because I don't really get to meet a lot of you folks. I'm an internal customer facing team and I wish all the members of my team could be here and just hearing from all your stories the last few days has been just like feeding me and giving me lots of motivation to go back and, and help Clio and help all of you. Uh, today's speaker is Bob Simon. He's truly an uh, inspiring change maker. I was just joking with him that his name kind of pops up uh, a lot in these meetings, and this is the first time I met him today, so it's just really a, a privilege to meet with him. He's a trial owner, or sorry, trial lawyer and owner of the Simon Law Group, as well as the co-founder of Justice uh, HQ, an application-only membership for consumer advocate attorneys, looking to collaborate with peers, cultivate and grow their practices, and operate in a more modern, really innovative way. He has a wealth of experience to help all of you and your law firm grow and thrive. And I'm just super excited to hear what he has to say today. So please welcome Bob Simon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm, I'm dubbing this talk. It's the first time I've given this specific one and it's called Inbox Money. Yeah, I'm trying to trade market, so don't try to steal my thunder. Don't, don't step on my turf. But here, I'm going to read something that I, uh, I got last week. So... Well, the point of this talk is we're going to teach you how to make some fucking money, all right? Automated funnels to click funnels to money. So without spending a lot of money. So I got this text in this from Cynthia Santiago. I'm putting her on blast. She is an immigration lawyer and does criminal defense out of Southern California, but she's a true lawyer. She's been an activist since she was a teenager. She actually goes to the border to help people like real lawyer stuff, real helpful. She wrote this to me because I showed her she, through Just HQ and her how to monetize referrals. She is a wealth of information, these groups of people that follow her. She's big in the Hispanic community. And she wrote this, to, she was looking for a lawyer in New York to refer a case to, which I help her, but she wrote this. I was thinking how sad it is for attorneys who don't know about referrals. We're not taught about referrals and we have very few mentors outside of our practice area. For nine years, I didn't know about the power of referrals. I've referred 60 plus cases now with minimal effort and my biggest one just settled for 1.75 million. She will make a million dollars, I will bet you next year, only referring cases and doing it effectively to the best lawyer. If you get the best case to the best lawyer and you can monetize it, there's nothing stopping anybody here from doing that. If you have a law license, I see if it's, well, I got to talk about me. I would, these are like my cue cards. Like when I try cases, they're just like my visual. Bob, don't forget to talk about this shit. So I'm, I kind of have a cheat code. I have a twin brother who is my operator at my law firm. Um, so we you know, grew up together. And we grew up in Pittsburgh. I live in California now. We all do. But uh, I was blessed to have a twin brother that likes to run our firm in his basement in his underwear. It's beautiful. And I get to go do this stuff. But we came, my dad was a truck driver. We didn't, we weren't this, these people that had a bunch of seed money to start our firm. I did it three years. I started in 2010, three years out being a lawyer and said, I'm just going to go for it and start my own firm with a handful of cases. And I'm going to show you stuff that I did and still do to get ground up marketing. Very easy to do to get cases into the door for you. So we took that when I started just by myself and I brought in my brother. Now we have 25 lawyers. I have like eight offices over three states. And we only do one thing, we do it very well, and that's trying personal injury cases. That's it. And very specific, it's either products, spine, or brain injuries, or wrongful death, and that's it. Everything else, I'm referring out, we're making seven figures, just in referral fees, with this system. Okay? So I'm going to show you some of this stuff, so you can break the golden handcuffs. If you're out of firm, hopefully you can start your own firm tomorrow, or start a little LLC under it, so you can start generating income with your law license. Um, I put my boy McLovin up here, to remind me to say... If you got a law license, you have a license to get referral fees or consultation fees, depending on your state of choice. That gives you the ultimate power to become what I call the general counsel for any call that comes in the door. If you do this the right way, you will be able to pursue your passion, just like that immigration lawyer I talked about, or people that do the innocence project, like real stuff, helping folks. 
you can supplement your income and do what you love and what you're happy to do. So one piece of advice to anybody here, niche up into the stuff that you love to do, outsource the rest of the shit. Even at your firm, I would say write down a piece of paper on the left, all the stuff you love to do. On the right, all the stuff you hate to do, discovery, emotions, whatever. Outsource all the stuff on the right piece of the paper. Left, concentrate on and do it. You would be surprised and shocked how many lawyers out there just want to write motions? How many just want to do discovery? They love it. And I love to give them a percentage of the fee to do it too. So I don't got to do it. Um, this is the general counsel, the consigliere. This is from the Godfather. I think about it and I teach a lot of lawyers. You should be the, er you should be a lawyer everybody knows. Doesn't matter what you do or specialize in. They're your first call. When I was a kid, I had a guy's business card. It was just some lawyer I met. I don't even know what he did, but I knew, I knew a lawyer. Like, it's in my wallet. If I have a problem, I'm going to call this dude. Now, if that guy was smart. When I called him, he would have referred out my case and got a referral fee other than saying, I don't do that practice area of law. Click. Well, sorry, dude. Um, <laughs> this is my Taylor Swift and messy slide, which I love. So I call inbox money works only if everybody wins, because if you do it the right way, you get the client, the best person for that case, that practice area, that specialty everybody's going to win. You're going to be able to use your license. Don't be ashamed about it. You can get a referral fee for it. You do a, a fee sharing agreement. Um, it's all, we have a product that automates this. We can talk about, but you start this circle of trust. Why not? If you can get in our world in contingency fee, you can get the same lawyer for a third of the fee as the billboard lawyer that you see John Morgan every year, right? Everywhere. Or Alex Shanara, who I love, Shanara. You can get the same lawyer that's the best at it for the same fee. Right? So why not give the client the opportunity to maximize the result? So when I started trying cases early on, I wanted to learn. So I was bringing in big dog trial lawyers to try the cases with me. They would carry the costs. I'd give up 50% of the fee, this case that I had, but I would learn how to try the cases. First one I did and brought somebody else in, we hit a verdict for nine and a half million dollars. On my own, maybe I would have got a million or two, but guess what? The client then ended up netting like $5 million. This guy was a he was an illegal resident here. He did not speak English. He got catastrophically injured. Now he owns a bunch of duplexes in Southern California. It's awesome. It's a great story. But if I bring somebody else, I got him the best result. I got a better result. We ended up making more money on it. And I didn't have to carry the costs, which was beautiful. It freed up capital for my firm. All right. So this is something we're talking about building your waterfalls. You should be able to channel everything that comes to your office. I always say, let the turn the faucet on full throttle. You just need to know where to direct that water, where that waterfall is going to flow to. You should have your predetermined folks and practice areas or geographically ready and loaded up with cases if you don't do them. So we have an automation, which attorney share, which Jack talked about yesterday. They were first integrating with Clio with this. And we have a product called waterfalls where you can predetermine these workflows to just maximize your referral fees. It'll track your referral, do your fee sharing agreement. It is something that I hope will change the way that we the way we work so we can pursue our passions, get the case to the best lawyers, and we can make reoccurring inbox money revenue, okay? So I would say I wanna practice from the Maldives, and I, yeah, being a busy trial lawyer, trying like seven or eight cases a year, and now I'm doing like maybe one, because I have 20 lawyers that could do that for me now, but I took, we took two months, my wife and I, we spent like a few weeks in the Maldives, we traveled, and I was, I had a lot of apprehension about how the hell am I gonna run my practice traveling like this and being 12 hours ahead or nine hours ahead, it was shockingly easy when we had these automations set up in the back end. And I had, you no, know, we had teams doing different things. We were outsourcing cases. Somebody else was doing the trial for me, but you, that's the quality of life. Just figure out what your dream is and then push your way to do it. And that's mine. I like to travel and just hang out at the beach and be fat and happy, dapper, fat and dapper. Um, Clio, heh, I made these slides. I'm not so good at slides, but they're kind of a little funky. But it saves you money. Like that's actually my typing. And I try to do different fonts so it looks cool, but I hope it worked. So it saves you money, but it now makes you money. It's the first CRM that you can actually weaponize. I'm going to show you how to do it, how you can use Clio. And they're just going to, you're going to hear that ding like we heard the keynote. Ding, ding, ding. Just inbox money coming in. So here's what they do. This coolest thing that they do is they integrate with a lot of other folks. Maximize their integrations. I'm going to show you what, what I personally use in workflows partners of Clio and how it pushes directly through and makes me that inbox money. 
these are tools you're already using. So this is that uh, attorney share. This is the one Jack talked about yesterday. This is the product that was three years in the making, one of the co-founders of, to just digitize these referrals. The waterfalls, which we're talking about, but the, there's a vetted network through Justice HQ. It's the community. Everybody has to be voted in. There's a credential process, but you want to be sure that the person that's working on it is good. So we're, that's going to end up syncing with everybody, but Clio's first. So on Clio, they're going to have a button, which I'll show you, which you can push the case directly to attorney share. TLDR, you can just have one intake bot on your website or your Instagram, and then you're going to push one button. It's going to go directly to Clio Grow, which goes directly to attorney share, and you could just start making this revenue. I'm going to show you how we're doing that. There's the button on Clio. They could send it. This is just maximize referrals. This is how you're going to make inbox money without doing much other than having a great network. It's going to push to this form, which is going to look like, hey, you can post to a public. Like, I just need a lawyer in Wisconsin does X, Y, Z. You post it. Somebody will say, hey, I'm interested. It's all B2B, lawyer to lawyer. You say what fee you want, what percentage, or if you want a finder's fee, referral fee, they can say yes or no. You can renegotiate the deal, whatever it is. But this is all going to be automated through some of this. So there's a lot of folks like, I see Billy here who has a huge outreach on Facebook, like huge. And she spoke yesterday in a lot of this stuff, how to use your voice and your, your network to leverage it. So she could put a button on her Facebook that just says, hey, um, we're helping sex abuse victims that got a, that, like, at the USC. I know a lawyer that retired to Maui because all he did was set up a funnel for those cases of the USC gynecologist. And he, he made like $100 million on those cases and just moved to Hawaii. He said, I'm done. And all he did was set up a funnel and got it to the lawyers that do those cases. Same thing. So you're going to have profiles, high pick, nomis, tree board. That's my name backwards. I got real creative there. Um, I did go to actually George Washington. My brother went to Southwestern Law School, but I don't know why that's up there. But you'll be able to see people's profiles. You'll be able to log in and see all the deals and workflows that you have. And with Clio, some of the stuff that they built, you can have a peek through to be able to get the case status of your referral. So imagine just logging onto this dashboard through Clio. You'll never have to leave Clio. And you'll be able to see all the cases you referred out or the cases you referred in what percentage that you have on those deals and the status of those cases. And if you want to do a digital marketing spend, you can start to predict when those cases are going to start to pay out. I don't do any mass tort stuff, but I sure as hell refer a lot of them out. I mean, I first made a million dollars on wildfire cases because I knew a lot of homeowners and I knew who to send them to. I didn't have to do anything, right? I didn't set this stuff up. We used to track it on spreadsheets and text messages and emails. This is going to automate a lot of that stuff. I don't know if anybody knows this dude. Everybody know Tom Girardi? Other than Real Housewives of... Yeah, okay. So this guy was a massive crook in California, stealing from clients' trust accounts. This is what we want to eliminate. Um, he wrote me a letter in 2008 when I was a first-year lawyer, and because he ripped off a friend of mine, he didn't pay him the money. I, I sued him. I didn't know who the fuck he was, but he's this big lawyer. And he wrote me a letter and told me, he said, you have 24 hours to dismiss this case. I'll make sure you never work again in this town. Swear to God. You wrote that letter to me. And then I was sitting on panels with him year late, years later when I started my firm. And I told everybody, this guy's a crook. And like finally, five years later, they found he was stealing tens and tens of millions of dollars from his clients. Um, but this is what we want to alleviate. If we get the lawyers to the best ethical lawyers, the best cases to them, and you can track your referral fees, this is not going to happen. And a lot of the workflow that Clio has and offers you, you have the ability to get paid through Clio eventually with the Clio pay, ding, ding, ding. You'll be able to do your accounting through it too. None of this shit's going to happen again because they have vendors here that make sure you are compliant with your trust account, all this other stuff. And by the way, if anybody has any questions, we got a microphone around here. I'll do it live time with you. We'll, if you have a specific situation, I'll try to work it through with you. So we're going to talk marketing. I'm talking grassroots marketing, how you can actually make money tomorrow. First thing you should be doing, how you structure your firm. Just you, a partner, whatever. You want Chewbacca, a Lego. I don't give a shit. But you should do something people can remember. Today's day and age, we're Instagram, eight seconds, that's what you get. I rebranded my firm from the Simon Law Group, harder to Robert at the Simon Law Group, to just Justice Team. I trademarked that shit. I don't know how it happened, but I got Justice Team trademark. But now my email is just Robert at Justice Team. If you go to justice.team, justice.la, it's all going to be my funnel of stuff. Very easy to remember, easy to brand. So when you see like 15 partners, like this, Dumbass and McPhail, that's an actual name of a firm. Like, I did remember it, but you're set up for disasters, right? There's one that was called like, um, there's a defense firm in North Carolina. It was called like Lion and Cheatham. Yeah, Lion and Cheatham, that's the name of the firm, I swear to God. But 
It's all of total dicks, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I set up a lot of, I do a lot of media and speaking engagements like this, and I just set up like a merch store so people can go on. And this is just through Shopify. I don't, this is all made to demand stuff, which I put funny things like whiskey glass. I drink a lot of whiskey. Um, fueled by whiskey, inspired by justice, or goes down easy like our opponents. That's what one of the things says. <laughs> but now people become a walking billboard for you, right? It's cool. And I actually, that mug with my face on it, I make my wife coffee with that mug every day. <laughs> Unless she's in a bad mood and then it's not so nice. So I started branding a lot of my lawyers too, doing the same thing and they have their own click through funnels based on merchandise. So today, like I used to give this talk years ago and it cost so much more to start your firm, like so much more. Now you don't need a landline. You literally could just operate your phone as your, your, your entire firm. That's it. You get Clio product, a few of these other things. You're looking at a few hundred bucks a month and you could just start generating revenue tomorrow and use your license. So the big thing for me, and I think everybody should hear, should find a mentor, a mentor in your space that not, doesn't have to be someone with the success, like monetary success, but someone whose life you want to mirror or be like. You put yourself in these groups. A lot of people do these masterminds and some of them are good. Some of them you pay way too much for them. But if you put yourself in a circle of folks that are facing the same challenges and somebody that has succeeded those challenges, they'll give you that information for free. And the best thing about social media these days is you, you don't have to stalk people at conferences like I used to have to do to find my mentor. You just slide into their DMs, right? What's the worst thing that they can happen is they say, piss off, or they might say, hey, yeah, have, let's go have a cup of coffee and I can help you. Then they become your best friends and help you do these things. But find people, reach out to them. You, I think you would be shocked how much lawyers want to help other lawyers succeed because we all, we all win through this. Um, so this is our Justice HQ product where we have, we do this on steroids with our community to make sure that they're accelerating their careers, that they're making sure that they're being held accountable, that we have these chats, like there's one popping right now because there's a few trials going on. There's live support for people asking questions during trial. Like this guy's about to cross examine this expert and another member gave him the book that that expert wrote. He went down to the courthouse and this guy's going to get slayed because I know what that book's going to look real bad, but on demand education. So I would say, think of yourself as general counsel and find what I call intermediary referral sources. For whatever practice area you do, I do personal injury, I was best friends with chiropractors, I was best friends with trauma surgeons. Every lawyer I went to law school with, I found their email and I spammed the shit out of them and say, hey, open my firm, I'm paying referral fees. I still get cases today from that email I sent out in 2010, from that one email. Those are buckets of people that could come from one source, one lawyer, can give you a lot if they know what you specialize in. Same thing with like, if you do sex abuse cases, one therapist can probably get you a lot of people to help. Think about who is that person or that entity for you to be able to do and be okay with splitting up the points. Would you rather have a hundred percent of 5 million or 50% of 50 million by doing less work, right? Get in that mindset. I've been doing this for a long time. And sometimes you're the specialist. I get brought in a lot of big cases to try, and I gladly pay 50% to those people to have the honor to try that case with them, right? But I just do what I want to do. I turn down a lot of those, or I'll find a home with it through attorney share and still be able to monetize that percentage, okay? Um, so chiropractors, labor lawyers, if you're doing employment law, is a good one for you. Um, and then just start leveraging these networks. I think once you see, you get involved. I want so many listservs of practice areas I don't even do, just answering questions that I'm known as the personal injury guy. I get so many cases just from that. But the more active you are on social media, commenting and finding these people, you will be top of mind. The idea is to be top of mind, what we call top of the waterfall. If people start putting you on these predetermined waterfalls in your practice areas to attorney share without leaving Clio, you are literally just making money by sitting on your, your, your phone and a case will ping up that might be in your practice area or vice versa, you can set it out. But this is what we should be doing in the workflows. Everybody should know what you do, top of mind, every single time. Now, this is called the conference cert because I do a lot of these. And I used to go to conferences with a lookbook of people. I would memorize facts about them, look at their face, and force my way into a situation with them. And I would find a commonality that I predetermined that we had, right? If I knew, if I knew you like cats, I would love cats when we had our conversation, <laughs> right? I hate cats. I'm allergic. I don't, I mean, I don't hate them. I'm just allergic to them. But you have to start doing this with intent. Download the app. I always tip, download the app, be interactive with people. And it's cool to see who's speaking and then go have a conversation with them. They're there live, right? 
go, hey, I was at the falls last night till 1.30. I probably drank an entire bottle of bourbon last night. Yeah, some people, some people were there. This is a true story. But it was the best networking ever. I was meeting other co-founders of tech companies. We're talking about integrations. I don't remember half of it, but I wrote notes in my phone. I woke up and sure enough, there was some gold in there. I had to sift through a lot of stuff. So here's some other stuff. I go to a lot of conferences and network with intent. So we did the bourbon approved tour here with Clio on Sunday. We take lawyers out on the trail. Um, there's a good one in Cabo. Doing what, I mean, now that you have a license, your own firm, you're writing it off anyway. So you might as well go somewhere you like. There's one in Cabo. We have La de Gras coming up, which I know Jack's going to be there speaking a lot of legal tech, but we do one in San Diego where we have Flo Rida and Ice Q performing next weekend. And it's fun. It's like a music festival, but that is all about connections. We want people to meet that bankruptcy lawyer, right? Now you're my go-to bankruptcy firm for questions. That's the connections we should be making. And you could do it through the app. You could do it in person. You could do it virtually, but go to these conferences with intent. Um, that's what I've been doing for a long time. So you can cut your overhead. If you cut your overhead with doing some of these workflows and these systems, your clients are going to win because they have to pay less for stuff. I do a big AI talk and you should be using AI to charge your clients less because it's going to become a state bar issue if they're like, why did it cost me $5,000 for XYZ when AI could have char charged $20 to do the same thing? It's going to come to that point. So let's talk about digital networking. I'm going to show you some steps that I do to make a lot of money without doing very much. So this, I'm not talking about advertising, which we did advertise once, but we did a funny promo. Um, my brother and I, after we, I had a couple big verdicts early, we decided we're going to advertise on buses. Not to be getting cases from the buses, but we had a contest going on. If you defamed our faces and took a photograph, we would like give you tickets to sporting events. And it was hilarious. Like we, this kid was like drawing mustaches on my brother and it turned into this big social media thing. We got a lot of cases from it from other lawyers because they thought it was funny. Um, marketing's not advertising, this is marketing. So I'm gonna show you the funnel. So I do get a lot of cases through social media and through my podcast and shows that I do. And I'm gonna show you the tools that we use on the back end so that every time somebody goes into either my Instagram or into any of my websites or funnels, it's automatically going to Clio Grow. And from there, it's gonna automatically go into attorney share if I don't take it to get a percentage of the fee. So you're monetizing every So there's no reason why you shouldn't be advertising or saying other practice areas because you can monetize them. So if you go to my, this is the justice team network. So I have a media network with people shows on it, a lot of mine. So bourbon approved where we drink whiskey with very successful people in the legal space. But if you click be a guest, this is the company called Law Broker who partners here with Clio as well. I actually put their QR code up here because it's awesome. Every time people click those buttons, it's gamified. It goes directly into Clio Grow where I can decide to take that case or not, or be with those, you know, that could be a guest on my show, but they're automatically, those, those contacts are already saved. And we have the workflow where it pushes directly to attorney share. This is if they want like a practice area that I don't do. I put everything on those buttons. We do it from like mass torts to fire to sexual abuse stuff that I don't do. But when they click that button, it's automatically going to a lawyer that I knew does a good job. We're automating the fee share agreement and I'm making money just by having this on my website. We do that and we have an AI chat bot, which I'll show you in a second. But this is like one month we had just from these click funnels, 208 attorney referrals in one month, just coming through that. That's crazy. We were converting, we did 33%. It was higher this month too. This was the month before because people were finding us this way. This is law broker. We we're converting a lot of just these quick ones, but social media, same thing. So I do a lot of stuff on social media. People go there. It's funny. Like I had my dad, who I think should be the offensive coordinator for the Steelers. He gets so pissed off all the time. Um, but if you go on, this is, I record all this content in my podcast room and then I use this AI platform called Bunch and I'm showing what I do. I did one with Ray from Even Up, fantastic AI product. We talk about this. We do like four shows in a row. I drop it in this AI and it will pull out like the 10 most engaging posts and have the words on it. And that if you want to post in LinkedIn, the messaging different or Facebook or Instagram and I automatically upload it. But again, with intent, because as soon as I upload it, there's a call to action to get right back in this funnel. Either it's a case that I want, or it's a case I can potentially monetize. You can even have your chat bot with things like MessageBird on your Instagram DM or any DM, which will automatically push into Clio. This is my dad. I like making fun of my dad because he's hilarious. So he, <laughs> if you go to Bob Simon, we have the same name. He's, I made this joke earlier, but he's a, an angry retired truck driver, but he's hilarious. So he writes funny shit on his profile, which we allow up here. He talks about being abused by nuns 
um, because he was like, I don't know, it's really funny, but don't go, if you ask, if you go to Bob at justiceteam.com, you get this guy and you're somebody typing with one finger that's gonna write a really funny response. But this is why I'm showing you this because you see my face down here, this little chat bot. There's an AI chat bot we use called Whippy who also integrates with Clio. So anybody's navigating our websites and they need some help, AI is gonna start answering their questions for them. And guess where that goes? Directly into Clio Grow, automatically. And for those contacts, you can group them clients, former clients, attorneys, and you could do a mass SMS directly from that platform. You would never have to leave Clio. You push a button, you could communicate because you go through the Clio number, all through that AI chatbot. So we're qualifying these essentially leads overnight. I'm sleeping, AI is talking to somebody that engages our website, and those answers are automatically going directly to Clio Grow. So I might wake up and might have 10 cases. One might be one that we want, five might be garbage, Five might be people we can help. That's bad math. That's 11. Whatever. I can, I could do anything by 40%. But I can't do much else. That's lawyer math or a third. I forgot I had this slide. What, Bob, what are you supposed to talk about here? Hmm. Oh, ha, digital marketing. So you could do the highest conversions for me. So I'm probably spamming all of you right now. If you go, uh, if you see, yeah, I geofence this conference. This is a very good thing you all should do. It's not that expensive. You can geofence places. Like think about your intermediate year referral source and they should see your face all the time and what you do. Take a quick selfie video. But what happens here is this is through Whippy, that, that AI chatbot that I mentioned, will automatically pull that lead from Facebook or Instagram and go directly into Clio Grow. So you're literally getting these contacts like mad all directly into your platform. These are actual ads that I've run in the past for the Justice Team Network. When I speak to other conferences, I spam the shit out of them too. And I'll get a couple of cases just from being there, right? Massive opportunity. Why not take advantage of it? That's Whippy AI. Um, I don't know if I could play the video like this. Push it. Look at that. <laughs> Facebook links with Whippy. This is actually what happens in our, at our firm. Someone just hits the AI chatbot from an Instagram ad. This is, we're not doing anything. This is automatically engaging this person and it's trying to pull that data out of them. What kind of crash are you in? This is all happening in the back end. So we wake up in the morning and it's in our Clio Grow already. We could decide, do we want to engage that lead? Is it something we want or is it something we refer out to make money off of? And then Whippy goes directly into Clio Grow and then Clio Grow, all this information is auto automatically populated because you could predetermine what you want to qualify your cases done. Look, this goes into Clio and then it goes directly to attorney share where we put our firm right of first refusal top of the waterfall and then automatically flows down to other firms that we partner with or into the public marketplace. But this is stuff we could be using tomorrow and this is not an expensive product. Uh, Whippy like law broker, it's not that much per month. And you can also with Whippy, they also do your, can do your Google reviews, which also push back into Clio. It's pretty phenomenal. Uh, that's a QR for the attorney share product that now syncs with Clio Grow, which Jack talked about yesterday. I hope this is a product that everybody will be able to weaponize in, on both ends of the marketplace to send leads out that they don't do and to be in their specialty to be able to actually make money without doing this big market spend. Because let's face it, it's really fucking expensive to advertise as a lawyer. Really expensive. Personal injury where I know lawyers that are spending $10 million a month on advertising. Good lawyers shouldn't have to do that. That's a marketing firm. That's a marketing lawyer. But we want to make it real easy for them to get it to real lawyers. Let them do their thing. The idea is if you specialize and they know it and you're on this platform, it's a golden opportunity to be able to not have to do market compete spend. The Instagram ad stuff is not expensive. Just do a selfie video and you put it up there. And if you have a couple conversions, it's worth it because it's, it's a couple hundred bucks like a month. It's not much if you, if you do that. Um, so another golden opportunity, which... Clio announced, I think last month, is they partnered with Google. So you could do your LSAs directly to their platform. That's a golden opportunity because you could just have somebody else or you learn how to do it and do your LSAs through Clio. You never have to leave this ecosystem. You should have your fishing line in many different places as a lawyer. This is another golden opportunity to take advantage of. If you're going to invest in something, invest in your lead generation, your firm, I sure hell ain't putting money in the stock market. I put in my firm in real estate and that is it and legal tech, right? So this is what I want all of you to, again, I made this slide to that little money, little money. 
So instead of you got mail, anybody, so by the way, if anybody, if I email somebody, they have an AOL address, oh boy, it's gonna be a tough one, right? I get so many cases from lawyers and they don't even have, they're not even on the cloud, which again, it's, they have no fucking clue what they're doing, but come to my office and then uh, scan in the file. Oh, come on, man. This happens a lot more often than you think it does. AOL account, just a little more hand-holding. But you got mail. You got money. This is what that cha-ching sound that we heard yesterday on Chuck's keynote. I want all of you to start hearing this on repeat. You get money once through this ecosystem, you deploy more funds into digital marketing or grassroots marketing or taking doctors out for dinner, whatever it's got to be, and you get into this circle. This, I've been in this circle for almost 10 years where it is just automated and I'm just making inbox money. And then you're going to hear it over and over. You got money, you got money, money, money. I'm not a good singer. <laughs> and this is, the, this is what we want. We want the lawyer, the, the lawyer that is the best for that case to be easy to find and help that specific client. If we have that workflow, access to justice is cured, clients get a better result, and all of you get a better result. And you get to stay in your lane and focus on what you want to do and what you love to do. Because if you don't love it, don't do it. If you want to just generate cases, generate cases. If you want to be in trial, just try cases. We have lawyers at Justice HQ, and they are just there as like a mercenary to try cases. This happens. There's one girl, Casey Hoytland, another girl, Sienna Collado. They jump into trial on Friday for a trial on Monday. Hey, I'll give you X amount of points. Can you come try this case with me? I'm in. But that's what they love to do, and it's all they want to do. I used to love doing that shit too, until I have three kids. I have three daughters, six, three, and one, and I would much rather be home. I would like to, if anybody has a private jet, I'd like to fly home after this. <laughs> Seeing no hands, I'll be on Delta at 7 a.m. tomorrow, probably hungover. Um, I always think, I always have these monikers, never not working. My phone's always on. Whether I'm at Disneyland with my kids or not, I can, if I need to, pick up that call and do it. But your time is precious. You have to be able to scale your time. If you're in a service industry, what we are, you can only build so much per hour, right? That you, that's all you can do. But if you have these workflows, you're automating more revenue by scaling you, your access to people. All these funnels, you're scaling it. I've on so many different chats, I mean, every platform, but I'm able to scale my time doing that. Like at Just HQ, I'm just answering people's questions on scale. And so is everybody else. Chat rooms with, I'm on teams, my firm, it's all a whole thing. But that's like one of the guys we just brought into our company and he was teasing me. He's like, I would met you for one day and I have like text messages from you, WhatsApp, Teams, Slack. I'm like, Hey man, I'm just communicating the best I can. A little scatterbrained, but invest in you. But this is like, so I put this at the end for, we could take Q and A now, wherever we want. I'm still got 27 minutes and 58 seconds. But this is so I can spam you if you go to these places um, to get in the funnels. But I think anybody here can start a web page. It's not expensive to do. Put Law Broker on it with a chat bot from Whippy. For a few hundred bucks a month, you have a funnel that you can deploy very, very easily. Um, thank you. That's my talk for this right now for Inbox Money. But I would love to help anybody out individually. If you have a question about your practice area, what you can specifically do, I'm here for it. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. Great presentation. Thank you. How are you logging your contacts for conflict checking and doing that as part of this network? So you have an automatic conflict check. There's a way to like, to attorney share, you can hide the name of the client. You can ask for data access to the room to be able to do it to run the conflict check. Because once, since it's all business to business, no consumer going directly through, you have the ability to have that screening process. Just as if you're hiring an expert, another lawyer, it's the same workflow and process. What area, what practice area do you do? I'm, I'm a business lawyer, so I will get yeah. contacts like this, but I'm not going to take litigation. Yeah, so you can monetize so much just referrals by sending out an email to all the people that do the, the business because, hey, we're looking into this at practice area, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that's a good because you guys are doing a lot more repeat players that have conflicts, personal injuries. Very rarely that my client got hurt and I represented them, whatever. So good question. Hi, um, amazing presentation. Loved it. It's like, I want to be your friend. <laughs> For a small price, you can. Yeah. It's, yeah. The whole demeanor attitude, the no BS approach is fantastic. I love oh, that. You. Yeah. you know, and that you love music festivals even better. So, yep. um, the, as far as the referral service from state to state, is there an issue at all when it comes to uh, being barred in one state but not the other? Different rules for different states. So some states require you to be a um, co-counsel. 
So on the platform, we're building an actual workflow so that you can prove up your co-counseling. Because I'm licensed in Texas as well. We office in Arizona. So in Texas, it's like that. So if you, yes, you have a fee sharing agreement with somebody, which we're going to automate to make sure that that's done. But you still don't want somebody to say, you didn't really do this work. I'm going to challenge it. Because some, some people have done that and it's messed up. But as long as you can prove the work that you've done through the co-counseling. In some states, it's just so archaic, it's harder to do. But for the most part, your license allows you to, to fee split. Uh, Florida's like a 25% cap on referral fees. I think they just passed that. Yes. Um, so it's a little, little skewed, but yeah. Great. Thanks. How you guys are supposed to give me these questions ahead of time. So I know the answers. Come on. <laughs> you mentioned geofencing. Yeah. How do you do that? What's your tool? You could just do it on uh, Facebook ads. So you could actually target an area. Um, some place you can't like target hospitals that goes against the Stark Act and things, but you can do conference centers, hotels, and it could be as granular as like a grocery store. Um, I know whenever we did, there was a very bad thing that happened to a bunch of people at a school. So I was able to actually target the, the surrounding areas of the school with a face. We just, I did three different lawyers. We just did a Facebook selfie. We spent $500 on these and we signed like 20 cases just by geofencing that where what happened. And it's for a specific time period too. You can go yep. in and say, hey, this date to this date. Yep. And so you be as creative as you want. It could be a day, it could be four days, whatever. Thank you. I think I heard you mention that you had other lawyers in your firm that are also running pipelines. Are they getting referral fees as well? Or do you do all that centralized for yourself? No. So all, all of my lawyers I built on a contingency fee model where they're all getting a percentage of the cases that they bring in and the cases they work on. I'm a big believer of keeping the best talent and letting them get revenue shares. Everybody, if you're at a firm, they should be giving you a revenue share of what you bring in. Honestly, I mean, as a firm owner, it should be an A1. So what I do is like, there's one guy, Jason Sanchez, who's in a trial in Alameda County right now. Um, I made him Sanchez Claus because he, Sanchez Claus, he has a big white beard. So I just started branding him as that. So when cases come in, it comes through Jason. It comes in as his referral, which then we're able to track. And uh, Lawbroker built a feature, which we were just talking about yesterday, where you can go into your storefront on Lawbroker and have all the different attorneys that you brand and see where all the cases are coming through. So there's transparency. So if they're looking at a lawyer at my firm, like one of my younger lawyers, he was a year and a half lawyer and he had a $160 million verdict against Suzuki. Huge success. He's getting so many cases because of the success he had in that. But we want to track them all for him so that he could see all the money that he's making through these attorney referrals that are finding him because of that motorcycle crash case. Thank you. Yep. I think a hand here and then up front too. Hi, thank you. In terms of tracking the cost per lead or the return on investment of the various apps, the more we are using these types of software, the more tracking is necessary to figure out which ones are being cost effective and which ones are not. What kind of person or title or role in your business is doing that? This is a good question. Um, if you have somebody, we have somebody in my firm is called a VP of marketing that also understands light digital marketing. So what she does is every week we kind of have an accountability meeting to see what spends or have worked. And like we do, I only do digital marketing spends through social media because it's our biggest powerhouse. I don't do any SEO or pay-per-click. We're going to start exploring that because of attorney share. I can monetize across the nation attorney's fees. So every end of every week, she says, all right, we did this campaign. We spent this much. This is what we saw, or this one was really strong, or this wasn't. Uh, our firm now sponsors the LA Kings. So part of the deal is they have to repost my stuff and we make it really funny. Like we have a, who, who do you think has the most penalty minute? Any hockey people? I know Daniel is, but who do you think has the most penalty minutes ever for the LA Kings? It's Marty McSorley. It's who you think it was, but we have a tracker that does it. So we, I do funny shit with them and they have to repost it and then they go back to our social media. Um, but that's been a big source of us for cases. Um, we just do it a little differently, but we have that accountability meeting. So I actually hired a headhunter to find that role because it was harder to find. Um, but it was a VP of marketing with digital marketing experience. And it's, she's very, very organized. She's essentially an operator, but understands this world enough to hold these other people accountable.
Thank you. I am Ine Jackson Atkins at Esquire Accounting, where attorneys come to maximize profitability, grow their businesses faster. Nice. We are, we are partners and practitioners. Thank you so much for this presentation. I wish that all the attorneys that I work with were like you. <laughs> and to that point, you spoke of mentorship a moment ago. Um, do you do that? I'm from Dylan. And oh, you do. So I can just tell them about you. Actually, I'm from Southern California, so it's all good. Oh, sweet. We can hang out. Come to my whiskey room in Manhattan Beach. We will. Uh, so in Manhattan Beach? Yeah. Oh, let's go. Okay. Do it. Very <laughs> often. I, I did. <laughs> we no, no, wait. In the, in the back, in the, in the red. And Esquire, we do team with, we do team with um, lead generation specialists, uh, social media marketers, and things like that to oversee the return on investment calculation and to really help our attorney firms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I always think there's fractional C-suite people you can have, like a fractional CMO, fractional CFO, that you can hire their 1099s out in-house employees. But I do think you need to have one fact checker or a third party holding, because you don't, I don't, I don't know how to code. I don't do SEO, but you have to somebody that holds them accountable because they could be just making shit up, right? Yep. Right on the lights. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot see your face. That, that's fine. Um, this might be a really basic question, yep. but... Do we need to have both Clio manage and Clio grow to participate in the attorney share program or is it, how does that work? So attorney share is, it's ag, it's, is agnostic, but Clio has the best workflows and interfaces with it. Clio has the first, it's the easiest to use Clio because it, Clio grow can go directly into attorney share if you don't do it. What we do is ours goes to Clio grow and then we put ourselves at the top of the waterfall. If we accept it, we then push it to Clio manage. If we don't, we push it. It can push to somebody that has another CRM or none, right? It could, the data goes back and forth. Thank you. Yeah. Not a basic question, actually. Very good question. Behind him, too, there was another question. Again, on the lights. Thank you. I just, you touched on this a little bit, but what would you recommend for attorneys who are at maybe smaller or mid-sized firms that have already branded themselves as a specialty, but who want to do this kind of referral base and who are not spending marketing budget on things like personal injury cases. So why not have another, you already have your brand, you can start a sub brand. Like there's um, guy, the guy, you, know, you ever hear the one top dog law, you ever see his stuff? So I know James very well. James works on no cases. He refers them all out and makes a lot of money doing it. And he just does different, he comments on different, you can see what he does and it's just, it gets repeated so often that people reach out for legal advice. Like TikTok, if you're popular on TikTok, it's another massive generation funnel that you should be weaponizing. But your niche is your niche for other lawyers to find you. But the general consumer doesn't know what a fucking lawyer does, to be honest with you. They're just like, oh, I need a lawyer. I'll call that person. And that should be you. And then you decide where it goes. So just create a separate brand. For yeah, or, or just do with it. What's your, so what do you do? What's your practice area? My, my practice is in the state planning trusts and advisory services around probate. All right, you should be getting, who's the first person that when there's a death case that they call? It's you, right? I get a lot of cases from lawyers like you for wrongful death cases across the nation. You could immediately monetize just by educating the masses about what to do if a loved one dies or, hey, look, there was this product failure that did this, or, hey, this is what happens in a bankruptcy situation. You're still educating your, your clients and the people that are following you for your specialty but now you have the ability to refer out all those other things that you say. Very easy. Thank you. Yeah. Man, 16 minutes, 41 seconds. I think, oh, I think we good. Cool. I do the same exact thing you do, but 95% of my work is referral coming in now. How is it if, how is it as the people that receive those referral cases, do we have to basically sit on the, the platform and, you looking for them or are they how are they fed to like have a, you set like a favorites group for probate favorites group for business contracts i mean how's that done so there's public and private marketplace the public one is you just post out and any credit lawyer that's on there can essentially say that they're interested you set your terms there's the private ones where you can predetermine who gets right of first refusal or invite to a case um there's that workflow too but you can set up your notifications however you want so the attorney share it's will be live across the nation in Q1-ish. So that's why I put the wait list up there. You can set your notifications how you want. If you want to just be pinged through Clio, which is what we do, or you want to get an SMS notification or have your case manager on there or whomever, 
we'll put different credentials based on, like if you're the only person that can say yes to accepting the case or signing the deal, you have different credentials from like your case manager that's reviewing it, giving you the information. Um, but the idea is if you come to an agreement on the case, it'll push automatically into Clio or whatever system you use. Doesn't matter what they're on, it pushes directly up and vice versa. The only other concern I've had in these referral networks, because like, again, I do only referral work coming into me so far, is that the junk gets passed around over and over and over again. And who ultimately is responsible for advising the client regarding rejections? Because they, they, at some point in time, we have to tell the client it's not a case. Yeah, and that's because it's just, we went through many things of making sure that we were just a software in the middle for that. And my firm will be there as well as a, the ability to pick it up. But you want to make sure that that it has to be ethically disclosed and every state has different rules. So you're going to have both lawyers, with the fee percentage on the fee share agreement, or you could set up whatever automatically signed document that you want because the client has to know. But yeah, through the lead gen stuff, if it's a case everybody passes on, maybe it's just not that good of a case, right? Because there's different workflows of like, there's lawyers that are just starting that would take a $15,000 slip and fall case, right? But there's lawyers, some lawyers that only take the high end. I know exactly what you're talking about, but there's I think people would be shocked on the amount of cases people will take when they're starting their firms, they're young and hungry, because I did it too, and I did a really good job because I wanted to, and there's those lawyers out there right now. Yeah. But the whole key is having the right end of the referees on the one side that are the best lawyers at what they do. Yeah, and I guess what I was trying to clarify is if we're the ones putting that lead into there, how do we make sure that it's actually eventually closed out? So through the Clio tracking, you'll be able to get case status with the product that they launched. You'll be able to know the status of the case. So I know people that generate a lot of mass towards cases, for instance. You're going to be able to see, hey, here's the steering committee folks that have it. Here's the status of it. And like the Camp Lejeune cases are going to probably get paid out for a year. People are waiting for that to reinvest that money into something else. This will help track all that inventory. And what we're going to do at Attorney Share is upload all of your existing referrals into it now. So it starts tracking right away because like I do this all I was sending out cases to other people and I would get a check in the mail that I fucking forgot about it I was like oh sweet but there was no accountability because I would have just forgot had they not sent that check that's your whole business model so you have to be able to track this stuff now and we're just digitizing referrals because it's been a pain point of mine for for years question right up here soon I was gonna say I'm a mom so I don't necessarily need the um the microphone, I could just use my mom voice. <laughs> um, I have a two-part question. Okay. One is we are a trust in the state's elder law estate planning firm in New York. And we obviously work with clients who um, and refer different nursing homes. But obviously there's a section of our business as a trusted resource that people come to us for recommendations for personal injury because they've suffered an issue in a nursing home or a home health aid. And so I can't come out on a web, our website and say, oh, did something happen to you in a nursing home? Contact us because it'll ruin our relationship. Right. So how do you, and I don't want to say in a sneaky way. So in a non-salesy, cheesy way to not- How do you do that? Education, come from an education standpoint first. What I do, is I'll interview on my podcasts and shows specialists in other areas mm -hmm. and then cut those up into YouTube shorts or on Instagram. Again, this stuff's like free to do. Put it out there. Now you become an educational source and people are like, oh, that's right. My lawyer knows somebody that does that. I'll hit her up and then you monetize it. Mm -hmm. But you're right. You don't want to ruin your credibility with those folks. You don't come out and say, mm -hmm. we're now taking nursing home cases. By the way, those are, I refer those out to three or four different lawyers that, mm. in our community and we have made millions of dollars because they are popping. I mean, yeah. they're holding these people accountable and it is disgusting what's going out there. But And just yeah. one more follow-up question. Um, from what I understand in personal injury, a lot of these attorneys are getting on and figuring it out if it's, a, if it's a viable case or not. In our office, we get about 30 to 40 leads a day, whether it's phone calls or online. And I have about six receptionists who are responsible for doing that. And how, because if I put the attorney on the phone, they're never going to get off the phone. They, yep. they think they've established a client relationship and now we're best friends and we really can't help them. So I use the receptionist as kind of like the first screening. What advice would you give to those non-attorneys who are doing those types of roles in your office so that they're handling leads properly? So they have to, you know what criteria you're looking for. So the gentleman in the back that does a lot of intake, I bet you they have a sheet of stuff with their call centers of what they're 
looking for to get out of these folks, those predetermined qualifications go into your Clio and it'll help qualify that case for somebody that might pick it up. So for you, I mean, consult with whatever lawyer to see what things that they want to do, what's outside your practice area, but they should have a sheet. I, I did telemarketing when I was like in high school and it was my brother and I would roll in after practice and just crush these fools selling TV guide subscriptions. Like it was so much fun, but they give us a sheet of stuff that we had to say. So we had to like make sure we got the right data. It's the same thing for that. And there's a lot of outsourced companies that will do, um, that do that intake for you. Um, a lot of people, I mean, we use one called alert. There's one called capture. Now that's an AI one that's coming out that I just vetted, which is really cool, but it auto qualifies the stuff that you want, goes directly into your Clio grow, and then you can push from there. Yeah. But that's, I mean, if you set up that workflow, you're getting 20 years. Imagine converting just three of those without doing work on it. Jeez. Woof. Well, we'll, we'll take your private jet back next year. <laughs> All right. I did it, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll see you after dark. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Uh, we have a few more minutes. I have a few questions here. Do you want to wrap it up, Bob? What would you prefer? You give me a few questions. I mean, people got to get, they're, they're good. Let's roll. Okay. What's the, what's the number one mistake you see lawyers and law firms make who want to grow their firm? Uh, they don't want to. Like the number one thing that they make is they either don't find a mentor that shows them how to do it the right way because you can, it, you have to be able to send those waterfalls a direction. So some people are like, oh my God, I'm getting too much business. I can't handle it. I'm like, that's the biggest champagne problem you could ever have. You have to have your operations set on the back end first. I always tell people, if you're starting your own firm, you have to get on a case management platform like before you start your firm. Because if you have all the workflows and stuff done already, you've automated your operation system. Like that's A1. And then find a mentor to make sure that you set everything else up appropriately. You don't want to just go do advertisements on a bus like I did. Got it. And uh, so how do uh, lawyers make follow-up not just a great experience for clients, but easy for the firm as well? All of the clients? Yeah, following up with the client. Well, you can use um, Clio's app for direct to clients because it does English and Spanish. We do a lot of Spanish-speaking clients. That's an easy follow-up. So again, people want to just feel that they're talking to their lawyer or engaged, right? Sometimes with us, especially they're catastrophically injured or going through emotional trauma, they need somebody they can talk to, right? And that could be a virtual person, a chat, People love SMS. I mean, it's the highest open rate by far. So if they're getting a text from the lawyer, we text on scale through the Clio numbers and it's easy for us to see all the communications and save them. But it's just such an easy resource and it makes them feel so special. Put yourself, if you need a lawyer and you could just text them, we would do it all day, right? Mm -hmm. It's built something that you would want if you were the client. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, and if the legal professionals in the audience walk away remembering one thing from your presentation today, there's a lot what would you want them to remember? Split the money, I guess I would say. Find a spe specialize in something and be good with chopping up the percentage of the fees or the retainer fee, whatever it is, because it makes everybody better, honestly. Got it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.